Welcome to this tutorial guys where we are going to be talking about joints and specifically synovial joints. We have three different types of joints within the body, each with their own subdivisions. They allow us to move, run, climb, jump, skip, hop, and even search through YouTube to find this video. Joints, otherwise known as articulations, are points in the body where two or more bones meet and usually allow for movement, but not always. Before we uh, begin describing synovial joints, we'll just familiarize ourselves with a few basic terms that refer to joints' ability to allow movement. So we have here the synarthroses, amphiarthroses, and diarthroses. Now the synarthroses are joints that do not allow for any movement to happen. Amphiarthroses allow a small or slight amount of movement. And diarthroses are freely movable joints and are by far the most common in the body. And with that, we'll start our description of the synovial joints. And we'll start on that point. All of our synovial joints within the body are diarthroses, so they are freely movable. So we'll just uh, write up here quickly that they are diarthroses. Now the synovial joints also, they involve uh, bones that are separated by a fluid-filled joint cavity. And generally there are six main features that we can use to describe the synovial joints. And we'll just take a look at those now. So what are those six main features? The first is going to be presence of articular cartilage. Articular cartilage on the surfaces of the bones. We're going to also have a joint cavity, an articular capsule, synovial fluid that's going to be within the joint cavity, reinforcing ligaments, and also nerves and blood vessels. Now let's take a quick look at each one of those and get a good idea of what their role is. What we're going to do over here now is just quickly uh, draw where each one of those uh, six features is found and just quickly describe kind of what's going on so we get a really good idea of what a synovial joint consists of. So the first thing we're going to see here is that articular cartilage on the surface of those two bones. Now just for our argument's sake, we're going to say that this is a, a finger a connection between two of your knuckles and we're going to have cartilage there that's going to be hyaline cartilage. Our hyaline cartilage is going to be able to absorb compressive forces placed on the joint and prevent crushing injuries to the bone. Next here we can see our joint cavity and our first unique feature of the synovial joints. A joint cavity just refers to the space in which we will find the synovial fluid. But we have to be able to hold that synovial fluid in place. That is where our articular capsule comes in. It contains two layers of connective tissue that consists of a thin inner synovial membrane made of loose connective tissue and an outer fibrous capsule that consists of dense irregular connective tissue. So it's our two layers, a dense fibrous on the outside, just here, and on the inside we have our loose synovial membrane. So it covers all of the surfaces that our hyaline cartilage does not and it helps create a seal within that joint cavity. The next and most defining feature of our synovial joints is in fact the synovial fluid itself. Synovial fluid fills the joint cavity and is a slippery fluid that mainly consists of blood that has been filtered upon passing through nearby capillaries. It also contains hyaluronic acid secreted by cells of the synovial membrane. Now during rigorous activity, this fluid heats and becomes less viscous, allowing for greater range of movement. Now without the synovial fluid within the joint cavity, all of the friction caused by movement would cause great damage and wear away at the tissue and um, the cartilage as well. We will also find a sparse amount of phagocytic cells within uh, the synovial fluid that's just going to be responsible for making sure no microbes or cellular debris is present in that area. 
Our second last feature that I'm highlighting here now is our reinforcing ligaments. Uh, it is important for our joint to be reinforced and strengthened by the presence of flexible ligaments, and these ligaments can be extracapsular, meaning they are not an extension of uh, the fibrous capsule, or they can be intrinsic, meaning they're just a, a thickened portion of that fibrous capsule, as most of our, our reinforcing ligaments are. Now when we hear about someone being double jointed, we're referring to the fact that the flexibility of the uh, joint uh, reinforcing ligaments is uh, higher than usual. The last feature I'm quickly drawing in here is our nerves and blood vessels. These are not just important for supplying nutrients to the cells of the joint, but also for sending sensory information to our brain in relation to joint position and pain. We don't want our joints to become damaged, so it's important for our nerves to tell us when we're stretching them out too far or in a direction they just should not be going. Okay, so we know all of our features now that help us distinguish a synovial joint. Let's take a look at a real life example so we can see where everything is. For this example, we're going to be looking at where the humerus attaches to the shoulder, and it's known as our glenohumeral joint. Our glenohumeral joint is a uh, example of a synovial joint. And let's have a look here where we're going to find everything. So the first thing we can see on the surface of our, uh, the head of our humerus is that articular cartilage and on the opposing bone surface as well. Next, I'm just going to highlight here our joint cavity. So the space in which that synovial fluid is going to be. And our articular capsule, which consists of those two layers of the uh, dense fibrous and the loose synovial uh, membrane. Now that's just going to create that uh, watertight kind of seal where the hyaline cartilage is not present. And in the middle, all throughout that space, we're going to see the synovial fluid, which is going to be lubricating that joint. Just on the outside here, we can see our reinforcing ligaments, which are going to offer extra support and strength. And last of all, our nerves and blood vessels, which are going to be providing nutrients and sensory information in relation to our pain and position. All right, guys, that covers our synovial joints. In the next video, we will briefly describe the subdivisions of the synovial joints we will find within the body and how they differ. I hope this has uh, helped you out a bit, and I'll see you all next time.